Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be another drawing in graphite on clear gesso. So I'm going to work on that rough surface one more time, but this time it's going to be a landscape. First I'm going to do a little bit of sketching because I want to work out the position of some of the main elements. And as for the pencils, I'm going to use Faber-Castell graphite pencils and like the last time I'm going to use both the regular graphite pencils and the matte graphite pencils. The surface I'm going to be working on is a 200 GSM Fibriano drawing paper covered with some Liquitex clear gesso. Once again for those who don't really know what, what this is all about Clear gesso is a primer that is normally used in painting, but here, uh, when you're using dry media, it can work with pastel, color pencil, graphite, whatever, and it creates a rough tooth that has some interesting effects. I'll talk about that a little bit more during the video. Now I am drawing a line of trees in the background because this is a river scene and those trees in the back are going to be of very light value, barely visible, barely discernible shapes. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to do those with a lighter pencil first. After that, I'm going to do a bit of blending with a brush because I really want to soften those shapes a little bit because uh, I don't want any texture. When you have texture, it's an illusion of detail. It makes the viewer feel like there's more stuff, more shapes there. But for the objects in the distance, you want to simplify things. You want to make them a little bit smoother. And even though this is a very rough surface and creates a lot of texture, it also blends pretty well. So you can make things very smooth if you want to. So you can see we have some very blurry shapes there. And now I'm just uh, drawing their reflections in the water simply by spreading the graphite down, uh, creating an illusion or a reflection in the water. When you're drawing these reflections, you don't really need to match the exact same shape. All you need to try to do is match the position of the tree that is being reflected in the water. So you sort of match the lighter values against the darker values, uh, um, the same amount of value in the reflection, so that it looks like uh, the image above the water. Anyway, I'm going to start working on the tree. This part of the drawing is going to be a lot more detailed and also a lot darker, which is why I'm going to switch to these matte graphite pencils. So in the intro I said that I was going to use two types of pencils. They're all Faber-Castell graphite pencils, but I have Faber-Castell 9000 series conventional graphite pencils, and I have Pitt graphite matte pastel pen um, graphite pencils, which are uh, a little bit darker and they're also more matte, meaning that there is no graphite shine. Now I have to tell you, on this rough surface, uh, even when you use regular graphite pencils, there is no graphite shine. In order to create graphite shine, you would really have to burnish the surface and you would really have to put down a lot of graphite and burnish it with blending tools, but normally you don't really get graphite shine on this rough surface when you prime it with clear gesso. But the thing is that these matte graphite pencils are even darker than regular graphite pencils because you have those 12 B's and 14 B's and those are pretty dark. So when I started working on this canopy one of the first things I did was to reserve some of the white spaces where the light will be coming through the canopy. So I decided to put those in and work around them with my pencil so that I wouldn't cover them and so that I wouldn't have to deal with erasing them later because on this surface erasing can be a little bit tricky. Um, but I quickly realized that even though I wanted to start with lighter value that wasn't really working out that well so I decided to go with much darker value and then maybe lift up uh, the, the, materi the material as needed to make some portions of the canopy a little bit lighter. So I went in with a 
matte graphite pencil 12B and I started laying down some much darker areas in that canopy. Occasionally I would blend with my brushes and fingers and tutilians and all of these tools have slightly different effects. Of course here I had to draw some of the branches because some of the branches will be visible, not all of them will be obscured by the foliage and you also want to make it look like some parts of the branches are completely revealed, completely visible, while others are sort of partly covered with, um, with some foliage. And this part of the tree trunk, this upper part here, just under the canopy, is going to be the darkest one because it's under all that foliage which is casting a shadow onto it so because it's a shadow area it needs to be darker so I just went ahead and used a 14B there because it's the darkest pencil that I have so for some of the darkest bits for some of the darkest areas on my drawing I used a 14B uh, but the top part of the drawing is going to be pretty dark because it's uh, it is the canopy and it's uh, kind of facing against that lighter sky so in, in order to emphasize that contrast I had to make sure that the canopy and the, that the whole tree is darker to create that contrast and tension which is what I often do in many of my scenes. Now for the foliage here um, I draw it by using small marks, sometimes using a circular motion, sometimes going back and forth just to create some random marks that kind of look like a bunch of leaves of different shapes, uh, sizes and kind of pointing every which way or facing every which way because uh, there is a lot of randomness with these things and uh, when you're drawing foliage, when you're drawing trees you want to make sure that your foliage looks kind of random. Every now and then you're going to want to draw some more deliberate shapes, but a lot of the, a lot of the time you'll just be dragging your pencil trying to create some unpredictable texture. And this is what I did for the most part for the upper part of the canopy. I worked bit by bit, just dragging my pencil, making small short marks then blending a little bit with tutilians or with my finger and then going back in and uh, working a little bit more with a pencil and the reason why I'm kind of going back and forth with my pencil and blending tools is because when you blend on this surface things get pretty smooth and you lose a lot of that texture but you need to blend sometimes in order to fill in that tooth to make it darker to fill in those white spaces but like I said, you lose that texture and sometimes you want that interesting rough texture because that texture gives you the illusion of detail. So um, sometimes I would apply the pencil first, then do a little bit of blending and then go back in with a pencil to add some more texture and some more illusion of detail. Now the reason why I'm using different types or different manners of blending is because they all have different effects. So for example, the tillins, they blend pretty thoroughly, but on this surface they tend to move the material over the surface of the paper and uh, that causes um, me to create some areas of lighter value, area, areas that, which are a little bit lighter than I initially intended them to be. So when I want to really push in that material and when I want the area to remain darker I can just use my finger. But the problem with the finger is that it's too big and that it doesn't work for smaller areas and finer details. So you have to go back and forth with your different blending tools as well as your darker pencils in order to be able to create those darker details and in order to have a lot of interesting textures. So basically I had to work segment by segment because if you just use broad strokes to create this foliage it will look kind of ugly and it won't look very convincing. So when you work segment by segment and using shorter marks 
even when you blend a lot of that texture a lot of those marks still remain and you have that wonderful variation in value which gives the viewer some kind of an illusion of detail some kind of uh, an impression like there are areas of, of um, darker value those are the shadow areas which are deeper in the canopy deeper in that foliage and then the, there are these lighter areas where maybe some parts of the foliage or some clusters of leaves are sticking out catching more light from the light source because they're um, a little bit more on the surface of, of that canopy and in order to, to further em emphasize that contrast I would dab on some parts of that foliage uh, with a uh, kneaded eraser to make them a little bit lighter now let me say a few words about erasing while I'm doing that so on this surface it's very difficult to erase very clean marks so it's better to dab with a kneaded eraser than to drag with a regular eraser or a kneaded eraser for that matter when you dab you lift up a little bit of material and that works fine I'm working my way down this uh, tree trunk and this part obviously is going to be a lot lighter because as I've already explained the top part which is just under the canopy has a lot of shadow so the rest of it is going to be a lot lighter because it's more exposed to the light source but now you can tell that the uh, left side is a little bit darker than the right side which means that the light source is coming more from the right and the left side is more in the shadow also here on the grass under the tree to the left the grass itself needs to be darker because the tree and the canopy are casting a shadow onto that part of the ground so I need to stay consistent with the light source and I need to stay consistent with my shadows which is why I'm making this part of the ground here darker. I'm going to make it almost as dark as some of the darkest parts of my canopy. And then some of the grass and the bushes behind that are going to be a lot lighter. Here I drew some of those uh, lower hanging branches just to um, cover that part of the scene a little bit more with some interesting details and at the bottom I grew some bushes and some more foliage just uh, to make sure that you know th there are some other elements there are some other objects there not just that lone tree because the scene is supposed to take place uh, on a river bank so in addition to this tree, there's also going to be some tall grass, there's going, to be, there's going to be some bushes and stuff like that. Some of the foliage here, I'm deliberately making it a little bit lighter because it's a little bit further away. And I want to create that contrast between the elements which are closer to our viewpoint and the ones which are a little bit further back. And here, of course, I'm moving on to the rest of the canopy on the right side at the top. And I'm going to do that in a similar manner. Uh, as the uh, as the the whole canopy on the left and in the middle, I'm just going to drag my pencil, working in small, short marks, for the most part, in order to create some kind of uh, texture that kind of looks like foliage, that looks like a bunch of leaves. It doesn't have to be perfect and when you're looking at your reference you have to accept that you will be doing a, quite a lot of simplifying because when you simplify it's easier for you to focus on the larger relationships the larger contrasts between the lighter and darker areas and by the way as for the reference it's going to be in the description if you want to check it out and uh, here I'm moving on and drawing some more foliage under these branches just trying to draw some of the lower hanging branches smaller branches and twigs at the bottom in order to make that canopy look more developed more complex and um, I like these uh, darker leaves and darker shapes against the lighter sky because it makes for a very nice contrast and at the same time it fills the right side of the scene very nicely so that I can create some balance because 
on the left side I have that tree trunk and I have that dark canopy so I need to have some darker shapes some darker elements on the right side as well so that I can balance that out a little bit but here I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter here at the bottom because uh, some of the foliage there is a little bit further away from our viewpoint but it's also more exposed to the light source so I'm going to keep it a bit lighter and finally here at the bottom I'm going to start working on the foreground area I'm going to draw some grass and some small bushes there first I'm going to lay down the basic texture and the base tone by using one of the lighter pencils again because this part of the scene is going to be a little bit lighter than the top part but I'm going to be adding some shadow areas as well after that I'm going to do a bit of softening or a bit of blending with a brush because um, I want to push that graphite into some of the lighter areas I want to make it just a little bit more even and uh, once I have that in place I'm going to get a um, grassy area that looks a little bit softer and a little bit more dense because you can't draw every single blade of grass so blending tools are necessary if you want to make something a little bit more uh, realistic. Here I'm taking away a bit of value on this part of the scene because I want to make it look like this part of the grass uh, behind that shadow is a bit lighter so the tree trunk is casting a shadow only on one part of that grassy area while the grass behind it is again a bit lighter because it's exposed to the light source and I also want to have some lighter blades of grass here in front of that shadow area so so that they're sort of sticking out just like these uh, darker uh, blades of grass or clumps of grass are sticking out because they're in the shadow I want to have some lighter ones sticking in front of those shadow, shadow ones and finally in order to make this whole grassy area in the foreground a bit more interesting I'm going to break it up into smaller segments I'm going to start adding some shadow areas with a darker pencil to divide this area into clusters or clumps of grass that gives you some kind of um, feeling that this is uh, that this is an uneven terrain where some where in some places uh, the ground is uh, a little bit higher in others a little bit lower maybe um, the grass is a little bit more dense and a little bit taller in some areas and a little bit shorter and a little bit less dense in others and finally at the bottom I'm gonna add a little bit more darker value so that I could balance out the top part of the scene so I'm gonna create some shadow areas here at the bottom like maybe uh, the shadow is created by I don't know this canopy, the canopy of this tree, or maybe the canopy of some other tree that is just r right next to it. Who knows? But it works well for my scene because I don't want to leave that lower part of the scene much, much lighter. I want to have some shadow areas there as well. And in order to make them dark or to make them remain dark, I push the graphite in with my finger. I think you can tell on this surface how dark the graphite looks. It's not just because I'm using these matte graphite pencils, it's also because it's on this rough surface which has virtually no graphite shine. Graphite behaves much like charcoal and it actually looks a lot like charcoal on this surface. I'm doing some more refining on this grass, adding some more texture and some more details of smaller blades of grass I'm just sort of dragging my pencil randomly allowing it to work for me and to create some interesting shapes and interesting details and then doing a little bit of refining on the reflection cleaning up this line of the water and cleaning up some of the lighter portions of that reflection in the water so that uh, it really does look like a group of objects which are further back on the other bank of the river so that I can have that depth in my scene. Finally I'm going to do a little bit more work with a kneaded eraser and here I have to be patient because I have to keep reshaping the kneaded eraser in order to be able to lift up a little bit of value that's going to allow me to create some of these lighter shapes here and there 
I don't need to draw every single blade of grass, but uh, with a few suggestions here and there, uh, I'm, I can make it look like some of those blades of grass are sticking out, catching a little bit more, little bit more light from the light source, and I can make that terrain look more three-dimensional and therefore more realistic, creating more depth in my scene, uh, which is one of my main goals when I, wh whenever I'm uh, drawing these uh, types of scenes. Just uh, putting down some finishing touches and here finally I'm gonna erase my signature with a needed eraser because that's the only thing that'll work. So I have to uh, dab and keep reshaping my eraser so that I can form a tiny blade-like shape and that's gonna allow me to put down my signature and then make, maybe I can just clean up its edges a little bit using a pencil and now as you can see the drawing is almost done so there's the signature in the lower left corner I hope you like this scene um, I hope you found the video useful. So I wanted to play around with this medium a little bit more. And um, don't forget to check out my other videos. I have lots of landscapes on my channel. And if you want to see more videos, longer videos and more content, check out my Patreon. Bye for now.